I first heard about pre-exhaustion denial from a YouTuber named Daniel Figueroa. He's only 22 years old, but he calls himself Old School Dan because his channel is about the routines of famous bodybuilders from the past. He also sells online coaching for $500 for 12 weeks, which is about the same price I paid for in-person personal training sessions from an experienced, professionally trained coach on high-quality MedEx equipment. I personally recommend not buying any training advice from people on YouTube until you have been trained in person by a personal trainer. Of course, I would recommend finding a high-intensity coach if you can. There is a chain called the Super Slow Zone, which may have a Nautilus or MedEx gym near you. But there are gyms and affordable personal trainers all over the place. You can tell them that you just want to learn how to properly do the exercises, uh, but you have your own protocol in mind. They, I'm sure they can accommodate you. I just recommend staying away from Instagram rich kids, especially ones who claim that they put on 25 pounds of muscle in one month without steroids. Old school dance videos on Mike Mentzer and Arthur Jones are evidence that he doesn't really know what he's talking about, as he shits on high intensity training even though he has never even tried it, and he clearly doesn't know what it is, how it's done, or the science behind it. There's guys like Mike Mentzer, Ray Mentzer, um, Dorian Gates, guys who are all in gear that claim they, I mean, they, they made gains off of heavy duty workouts like this, and I just don't think, it. I've never heard of a natural making gains off of heavy, Mike Mentzer's heavy duty workouts, right? So that's exactly how I feel about it. So with that being said, let's start the video. He agrees that high intensity training works for bodybuilders like Mentzer, Dorian Yates, Marcus Reinhardt, and others, but for some reason thinks that it'll not build muscle for someone who is natural without saying why. Well, you can check out hitters on YouTube like myself, Ariane Meyer, or Doug McGuff, and you can see that it gives results. Why else would I, with 18 years of training experience, do it? So many people dismiss high intensity training without ever trying or doing any actual research on the subject. It could be because many high intensity advocates uh, are against steroid use and so have authentically natural physiques. If you want to look like a bodybuilder, then the key is to take HGH or anabolic steroids. Dan needs to emphasize that on his channel. All the old school routines he talks about are from steroid users like Steve Reeves and Frank Zane. For those wondering if pre-exhaustion training really works, um, I found two studies on that they did on um, pre-exhaustion. One of them is cold. Effects of pre-exhaustion exercise on lower extremity muscle activation during a leg press. Our findings do not support the popular belief of weight trainers that performing pre-exhaustion exercise is more effective in order to enhance muscle activity compared with regular weight training. Conversely, pre-exhaustion exercise may have disadvantage effects on performance such as decreased muscle activity and reduction in strength during multi-joint exercise. And I found another study that was called, it was called, the effects of pre-exhaustion exercise order um, and rest intervals in a full body resistance training intervention. So again, this right here isn't a full body workout, but in conclusion, pre-exhaustion training offers no greater benefit but to performing the same exercise within with rest between them compared with exercise performed in an order that prioritizes compound movements. So this is something I sort of already knew because I had a coach named Tyler and he always talks about like starting the workout with compounds and it sort of it sort of makes you know not really common sense but it sort of makes sense because why would you do an exercise that just hits one muscle compared to putting a lot of your energy into doing an exercise that hits multiple muscle groups you know so now we come to the main issue of this video and that is old school Dan trying to debunk the pre-exhaustion principle pre-exhaustion is the technique or principle popularized by high intensity creator Arthur Jones where an isolation movement is performed before a compound movement so that all of the muscles in the compound movement can reach failure at the same time. The problem that Pre-X solves is that when doing a compound exercise like a bench press, the triceps and shoulders will fail before the larger, stronger pectoral muscles. So your workout will be incomplete. You want all of your muscles to reach failure to stimulate growth. I used to make the mistake in my training that so many people do that I would do an isolation movement after the compound movement. In this video, I'll be showing examples of pre-exhaustion supersets for various body parts that you can do at home. The name of the exercises and the muscles worked will be displayed on the screen. A superset is doing the isolation movement followed by the compound movement with no rest in between. You don't want more than three seconds of rest between the two sets, making it really just one big set or a superset. In 2017, Dan made a video praising the benefits of this principle, but now in 2019, he's changed his mind. 
He cites two studies that have serious flaws, and why you can never just take an authority's opinion on a subject without researching it yourself. You always have to be on the lookout for biases and bad science. I know that Dan has read Arthur Jones' Nautilus Bulletin No. 1, which started the popularization of the technique, but he still doesn't understand why we use it. And clearly the authors of this study don't understand the point of it either. The reason to use an isolated movement before a compound is because of fatigue or muscle failure. When you perform a compound movement like a chest press, you are working the pecs, the triceps, and the front delts of the shoulders. Obviously, some muscles will fail first, and those will be the triceps, as the pecs are much bigger muscles and can therefore perform more work. So how does it make sense to do an exercise where the targeted muscles, the pecs, don't even get work to failure? So these criticisms of high intensity are based on flawed information. Just like all of the studies I've read that point to high volume training being more effective than high intensity training, they fail to even understand what HIT even is. The goal of all strength training is to fatigue the muscle as much as possible. Both studies that Dan cites run from Soylent University in Southampton, England, and the second from Gothenburg University in Sweden describe the benefit to be muscle activation rather than what they should say, which is muscle fatigue. The whole idea behind pre-exhaustion is that we don't want any muscle activity after the two exercises. The muscle should be worked to its limit, unable to move any more weight. That is how the brain gets the message that it's time to grow. Both studies tested muscles for signs of activity rather than exhaustion, and therein lies the fatal flaw. They noticed less activity in the targeted muscles after a pre-exhaustion superset. This is exactly what is desired, so they actually ended up proving that pre-exhaustion works. The pre-ex methods help larger muscles reach fatigue during a compound exercise where normally they would not because the smaller muscles would fail first. On his blog, Jim Stepani also mentioned some other glaring flaws in the British study. They used subjects who are older, 36 years of age all the way up to 62 years of age. So their findings have to be suspect because they use such a wide range of ages for the pre-exhaust group and the control group. There were also three times as many females as males. To eliminate as many variables as possible, the study should have either used an even number of similarly aged men and women, or just men or just women. This was not a good pool of data to work from, and it shows that they probably had a hard time recruiting subjects. Stepani believes that these subjects are mostly untrained, and therefore any weightlifting protocol will allow them to make easy strength gains, so it was not a fair comparison. Both groups, the ones who used free exhaustion and the ones who did not, both saw increases in strength, which leads him to believe that these subjects were not trained before the study. This study got it so wrong in fact that even Muscle and Fitness magazine had to debunk it. What these two studies, and another one from Brazil that Dan didn't mention, confirm that pre-exhaustion does fatigue the targeted muscle more than just doing a compound movement, therefore confirming the findings of a 1996 study that showed that subjects using pre-exhaustion gained significantly more muscle mass than people using the standard training protocol of doing multi-joint exercises first and isolation exercises last, if at all. I was surprised to read that even Drew Bay, a well-known high-intensity personal trainer and author, accepted the findings of the British study without really investigating the validity of it. He does at least say at the end of his article that the study does not disprove pre-exhaustion, it just said that it is not more effective than doing standard compound exercises with rest in between sets. However, I hope that I have provided enough information in this video to prove that Arthur Jones and Mike Menser were right after all and that pre-exhaustion will better fatigue certain muscles than just doing compound movements alone. The second study from 2003 published in the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research tested pre-exhaustion on legs this time rather than the chest. They found, quote, the activation of the rectus femoris and the vastus lateralis, also known as the quadriceps or quads, during the leg press exercise was significantly less than when subjects were pre-exhausted, end quote. They concluded, quote, our findings do not support the popular belief of weight trainers that performing a pre-exhaustion exercise is more effective in order to enhance muscle activity compared with regular weight, end quote. Their premise that pre-ex is done to activate a muscle is incorrect. It is done to fatigue a muscle. Naturally, you're going to have to lift a slightly lower weight on the second part of the superset because of pre-exhaustion. So their research supposedly disproving pre-exhaustion with EMG data that showed less activity in the quads during a leg press done after leg extension 
just ended up proving that it works. This is why Jim Stepani said that sometimes bro science wins over bad science. People who actually train know what works and what doesn't from experience. Bad studies like this done by scientists who don't train means that they don't even understand what they're testing and why. Old School Dan makes the classic mistake of not understanding what one set to failure actually means. You don't need high volume to become stronger. You only need to fatigue a muscle enough so that the stimulus for growth is triggered. Muscle is built when you're resting, not when you're working out. High volume trainers have a harder time fatiguing their muscles because they rest so long in between sets. After a set that they usually do not take all the way to failure, they sit around relaxing, regaining their strength, and then they basically have to start all over again with every set. Here he is blasting through a workout like it's a race, not working the negative on most of his sets and basically just wasting his time. So their training philosophy is one step forward, two steps back. When they do finally fatigue their muscle with fast reps and multiple sets, they train again the next day, further damaging their muscular development by impeding recovery. Yes, you can successfully build muscle this way, but my question is, why would you want to? We'll see you on the next one. Good luck with your training. Bye for now.